Mark Savage here, welcome to my channel. What am I talking about today? I recently did a video of E10 Fuel coming here in the UK. There's not really been a big publicity about it. Uh, most of us are only finding out literally now. And if you look at this, Speed Fight 3. Yeah, this is the one that I sold a few weeks ago. The lad didn't know either. Popped his local Sainsbury's. Um, stuck a extra fuel in it, it worked okay, stuck another full tank of it and he broke down. E10, broke down. This is a 2T 50cc speed fight, 2011. He bloody broke down. So he contacted me back and I'm not one of those gits that don't answer so I answered it. So I'll take it back and have a look. Originally I thought it was a battery and so on but I'm not going to go there, long story. Anyway, I took the carburetor apart and oh god, it just looked terrible inside. I mean it's only he really had one full up of it. Um, gaskets was really hard when I took it apart. Now, I did a carburetor on this. I did this one here just the week before I sold it him. So I knew it was all clean inside. It felt filmy inside, you know? Also, I said copper, I meant brass. Wow, some of you like correcting me. Well done for that. Anyway, damage the damn things, whether they're brass, copper, platinum, lithium. Argh. So what am I having to do? Well, the inlet manifold, which is a tiny little rubber on here, um, yeah, hard rubber, that may have had weak, I don't know, but it split, okay? Whether the petrol did that, vibration, moving, I don't know, but that had split, and all inside is filthy. Um, I've took it all apart, and the gasket literally just crumbled away inside. It is not good stuff for mopeds. Now, he went back there on Sunday, and he saw that they'd taken all the E5 little, you know, as you pick the, the um, uh, fueling f nozzle, that's the one, took the nozzle out, that didn't have E5 or E10, so they're lying to you now, not telling you what you're putting in your vehicle. So there's going to be a lot more breakdown for people. It's not good. The 2T does not mix with ethanol. It just doesn't mix, so you're not going to get the right thing, you get loads of heads breaking down. Even the little 40 over here, that won't run on it either. That will break down, being a cheap, simple, little carburetor. The jet's going to go... Um, all the little bits and bobs are going to go wrong. Anyway, let's look at this quickly. Here's the carburetor in here. Um, obviously this is the oil, 2T oil going in there. Accelerator, that should choke. And here's the inlet manifold. And it had gone all round. Now, I've done, <laughs> annoyingly, what happened, I've already took this out, cleaned it all up, put it back again. We drained all of the E10 petrol and put super in it. Now this is leaking like a sieve. And that's how I know all the gasket seals. It's just ruined them all. They're buggered. So now I've got to wait for the gasket seals. Annoying to say the least. And I said, there's going to be so many more people out there breaking down, not knowing why, won't start, poor starting. I've heard a lot of people message me about that as well, saying that their car, they put a full tank in and just wouldn't start the next day. It ain't good, is it? It's just not good. I understand back when I was a kid, we used to have, here in the UK, I've got to say that after the American chat's moaning at me, 2T, um, 3T, three, oh, two we had 2-stroke, three 3-stroke three and 4-stroke petrol. Yeah, we did, before unleaded. And they got rid of all them, bit complicated, and they made it unleaded, and that was it. <clears throat> Many years later, I think Super came out. But it was just unleaded. It was nice and simple in the old days. You were diesel unleaded. Now you've got a whole selection of the damn things. But I can understand why they took the lead out of petrol. It made sense, you know? And you can get lead replacement for your classic cars. That's great. Simple steps. Take these two bolts out of here so the box is off. Do not undo this one that connects to the box but undo this one that goes to the inlet manifold. Then pull the whole lot out. Easiest way ever after undoing a few bits in here. Let me show you. Very, very simple. Let's get the slide out of here. Take the screw out, you will lose it. There's your needle, nice and straight. Did all this already, put it out of the way. Undo the inlet manifold, like I said. That's it. Take the oil off. There's your oil one. Take that away. And this would have been your fuel, okay? I've already took that one off. But your fuel would have been the top. Just undo that one. Pop that out of the way. Pop that out of the way. Pop everything out of the way. Then, don't forget your choke. Just pull out. Simple as that. That's now ready to be taken out. 8mm, all you have to take off of here, 
just the two. Show you how simple. I know I've done it many, many, many times before, but I just want to show you how easy it is, you know, rather than getting yourselves right in a tiz was of trying to get all the other bits out, because this is the easiest, honest to God, way of getting this off. Mark Savage top tip. Watch this. Look at that. What are you looking at now? I have no idea what the Irish accent was. I will say I'm 48% 40, 40 Irish. So I can say it if I want to. Fuck you. Anyway, there we go. Now, it's leaking like a sieve. It really is. I put fuel in it, it's leaking. So I've got to figure out what the hell's wrong with this. But there you go. Like my videos, turn upside down, drain the petrol out, take the four screws out, the bottom will come off and you've got all your bits and bobs in there. Alright? Here's the carburetor. Nice and easy. Fucking no light then. Here's the carburetor. Flow. Main jet. Side jet. It is leaking for some reason. Zell gasket. We'll get a new goose gasket again. Here's the bowl of fuel. See, it's just topping over and coming back out. That's not right. I've done the airflow test, and once it goes up, it stops blowing through. Really starting to bug me. Never have a look at something else. I'm going to be fed up with this now, actually, taking the damn thing off. A bit of a pest. I've said before about, you know, when you, when you do things, sometimes you've got to do them again and again and a bloody again. But you've got to do them sure you line this up properly before you get this on here um, and I mean that about the airbox because otherwise the airbox will stick out so to keep that loose make sure the airbox goes on nicely which it is you can't see that but I'm just making sure it's on there one goes in there one goes on there so that is now lined up nicely so I can make sure the inlet manifold is nice and tight you must do that okay you can only suck in air this is why some bikes get that up and down web business. Do not forget to put this back on, okay? And if it makes it easier, come from the other side, go from underneath, wherever you can get to. But you must make sure this little pipe goes back on because you're 2T. And if you're not running 2T in here, it's not gonna be good. A little clip as well. Okay, there's your 2T back on. Just a little overflow there. It can be finicky I'll work on it. Oh, and headbutt the camera. But there you go. That's facing down. Little 2T is on. Clip is there. Happy days. There. Fuel goes on here. But you may as well get your nice tucked away clean remember it only goes one way if you put it the other way it will go in your field of assistance this should nicely go in and sit down change that little get gasket there as well little round one anyway that will nicely go down you'll see what i'm saying it doesn't go down doesn't go down you'll feel it and all of a sudden it just falls down like that there you go now you know it's down properly and to test, you just do the old accelerator and you can feel it, it doesn't feel baggy, it feels correct. And that nice little bolt you didn't lose, he says, a bit finicky. There we go, that's back in there. Screw, bolt, I don't know. It's starting to get to me now, taking this apart about 15 times. It's got a new gasket on it. Make sure that is really tight. Don't want any fuel coming out of there. Don't forget to do your old choke. You wonder why you uh, aren't going to go anywhere here. Oops, that's not your old choke. That, <laughs> that's for the seat. I forget, it's a Mark III. So, make sure this is on the underside. Don't do the mistake what people do is put this on top. If you put it on top, you can have a bit of problems. Because the seat will sit on it and you can damage it. So we're all connected, all connected. The last pipe to connect is Mr. Fuel, which is here. That's got a nice little clip on it as well. That should be nice and tight. This, get your hand underneath, 
pop that on all the way down. There we go, nice and tight. Line these up. Going like that. So, follow my carb cleaning video. It's on here 2T40 or the 2T1, upside down, take the jets out, float, etc. It's all back on there. Uh, and it said, make sure you get the oil and the fuel back on there. Now, can't prime it like the other ones because the Prime a bit on this is slightly different, I don't want to get my head stuck. So you will just have to keep the float full of a little bit of petrol. You can always um, prime it, or it's just turn over and start. Let's see if this carb leaks now with new gasket set in it. So I've connected the battery without the seat. Obviously it doesn't hurt it. I've already cleaned the plug. Let's just see after this damage. Um, hmm. You know what I'm going to do actually? I've realised that this is no no oil in there yet and due to the damage I'm going to actually uh, siphon a little bit of oil in there suck it through so it'll get straight away straight away through because um, it's not good if it's not on there so just testing the clip like I said don't put the seat down perfect all back together again a lot of adjusting of the air petrol mix, the idle screw, and this actual cable here. I don't know if that's a super, or with the fact I've replaced the inlet manifold, because that might have had a small, very tiny little bit in already sucking in air, and this petrol finished it off. New gaskets, I put the other jet in there, still revs up okay, so it's a practically new carburetor, basically. Maybe that's why it took more setting up, because of the smaller car. Because of the smaller jet, but, I need to take it for a ruddy long ride now, don't I? So this is running around about one and a half thousand revs. Um, that's slightly high. If I try and adjust it any lower, she drops and otherwise a tiny bit more and she runs at two. That is super for you. Really not dying well. Really not ready for super, because it will run slightly richer. But it is running, it's doing 40 mile an hour quite happily. Um, 30, 25, 30 up a hill. You're getting 35 and 40 odd down a hill. Not bad. I adjusted it five times on the on the run. I've just done 12 miles. Took a lot longer than I thought it was going to take, actually. A good girl. So I um, really just came to visit. So 12 miles. Stopped five times. Adjusted the air petrol mix. Didn't do anything. It didn't do a thing. Six half turns, three turns um, out, nothing. Four, five, two, one and a half, 
started to drop, drop a little bit one half turns. So it isn't isn't a case of their petrol mix or adjusting the um, idle screw and even I'm adjusting by cable now. It's not having it, although I know it's nice and tight, it's properly done. I, th I only thing I can put that down to is running on super. One of the guys on YouTube told me that Castrol 2T oil mixes with ethanol or E10 fuel. So check that one out, that might be more beneficial. Anyway, glad to see the back of this now. It runs, it's doing what it should do. Happy days, you should be really happy with it. Thank God for that. Just for peace of mind, I'm going to take the variant off and have a check of that. Why not? It's only because twice now, when I've done this... Hello. won't do it now. It, I heard it spin. Plus I've got to um, see what it's like after a couple of hours and see how it starts. Because originally this one didn't like you touching at all the throttle. You had to start it without touching the throttle. Before, starting every time. Let me check it out anyway. One of the nice little things about this bike was that someone had done all of these bolts um, into nice um, packet ones, you know, nice ionised, long reach ones. And I'll tell you what, absolute bargain, whatever we pay for them, what a lovely job. Just makes getting this off a pleasure, you know? Normally you've got them little bolts in there and they, they round off and they go silly. Then, I suggest as a top tip, getting them. If you're going to keep the bike, definitely. I've got no idea how much they cost. Um, I can't see them being silly money, but bargain of the week, whatever they cost, because they just make this job absolutely delicious. There's another word I should be using, delicious. But I, I like that. They just they nicely go on. They come out easy. You know, over the years I've had an awful, awful lot of these snap you know, and um, round off, so you have to try and saw them in half and that lot. This, uh, this was lovely. Absolutely lovely. I'm only chatting because uh, I'm just trying to get the lead out. I just wanted to have a look at the actual Bendix. I'm not sure that's okay. It sounded a little bit rattly. You know, I can't say what it is. Until you get it off. Now I know what it is. Don't really need to take that one off. It's only the air filter, but it makes sense. I'll tell you what, <laughs> it's bloody warm. <laughs> Very warm. Look, it's spinning. Give me that. Housing. I'm going to take that off and have a look. Let's have a quick look at this. Or not. There we go. One. Nice and simple. Take that off. Belt off. Get to see how the rollers have performed after all that time. Ha! Huh, bloody hot. And they're still looking good. That's what 12 miles does. Ha! Huh, it's actually really, really hot. I never realised they actually got so hot. Now these have done... Oh, do you know I was going to look at that? Since I last put them in. Let's have a look what they've done. You know, a little bit of dirt. Give me a little wipe over. They're not dirty at all. Remember every other one, if you're going to combi them. Ah, this is still burning my bloody hands. There we go. That was lovely, like it should be. That was like it's bloody hot. Ow! 
Don't know how many times I can start off like Homer Simpson. Hot, ow, hot, ow, hot, ow. That is hot. That's the starter, isn't it? Little dog. Might have a look at that. Let's have a look at this clutch anyway. Yeah, just a little bit of dirt in there. Pads are good. Quite a bit of dirt. Just a belt going through it. Nothing wrong with that. Right. Let me to clean this up and put it all back on again. I'd like to say to you all, take care of yourselves on the road. Thank you for watching. Don't use E10. Bye bye.